78 millions of adult cows and 54 millions of adult buffaloes. With this asset, India is number one in milk products production in the world. With milk production of 187 million in the year 2018-19, India has recorded 6.41% annual progress in with increasing milk production compared with this last decade. Although India is the largest milk producer country in the world, in indigenous cow, for head milk production potential of 1861 kg per animal per year had been recorded, whereas in crossbreed cow, milk production potential of 2900 kg per animal per year had been recorded. At national level, it is aimed to increase the milk production potential of indigenous cow from 1800 to 4000 kg milk production per animal per year by year 2024 to 25. The most commonly used biotechnology used in livestock farm in various developed and developing country is artificial insemination. The advantage of AI includes use of high genetic merit protein Origin tested sire that are having some desired traits to an ample number of females. Use of proven semen technology has allowed worldwide integration of genetic progress in AI industry. The genetic impact of sire is limited due to production, production efficiency and decreased sperm functions during crop preservation. Therefore, it is necessary to increase the artificial insemination coverage from present rate of 30% to 70% by improving efficiency of bovine semen crop generation. With this, I, with this brief background, I thank our today's speaker, Dr. Misha Savik, DVM Animal Reproduction Specialist, IMV Training and Technical Support, IMV France, for delivering today's presentation on bovine semen assessment and prison. I am also thankful Mr. Giri and complete IMV team for providing today's speaker and platform for the international webinar. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, shall we now uh, uh, invite Dr. Misa Savik to uh, presentation. So I would like to introduce Dr. Misa Savik. He is an animal reproduction specialist uh, in IMB technologies and he has a very rich experience of more than 25 years with IMB. So now he is in charge of IMB training and technical support for biological as a biological service manager. So especially he has a very broad experience and broad knowledge of the different market of global uh, aspect. So he has very fond of our market also. He has time to time visited Indian market also. So he have a good knowledge of our market also. So we are thank you for you, Dr. Misa, for a very short period of time. You have managed to give a presentation to us. Now I invite you and the floor is now with, with you. Please, Dr. Misa. Uh, thank you, Daya, uh, very much for the introduction. Uh, as a first word, I would like to thank Nagpur University in Maharashtra for organizing jointly with IMV India in Gurgaon, Delhi, uh, the meeting. And I would like to start by briefly introducing IMV Technologies and IMV India as a subsidiary of IMV Technologies. IMV Technologies is a company which is today 65 years old and has been based in Normandy, one of the regions in France in Europe. The founding fathers of IMV Technologies is the Cassou family, and the father, Mr. Robert Cassou, originally decided to work and to develop biotechnologies. Uh, IMV India has been created in 1989, and as you can see, has been already for more than 30 years present in Indian market. The headquarters was always in Gurgaon and always close to Delhi. And the main aim of IMV India was always to be close 
and help all our customers which are working at first in India and some continent, and then a little bit wider in the region and in Southeast Asia. Uh, under the management of uh, GP Raturi, uh, the big development of IMV India has been progressed and today it is an office which has service engineers, which has uh, sales department, marketing department. Uh, today topic of our discussion will be how to optimize and how to have organized a good semen production and freezing assessment in bull, boss syndicus, boss taurus and buffaloes. IMV uh, has been already for the forefront and the original product portfolio of IMV technologies was always the development and to give support to all our customers worldwide, especially in bovine, but today we have developed also in different and other animal species, adapting our tools to worldwide demand for artificial insemination and embryo transfer. When we talk about bovine reproduction and when we talk about uh, in, uh, assessment on bull semen in general, we have to admit that everything has been developed to optimize and to simplify as much as possible the production of bull semen. Bull semen always starts with semen collection. We also give advice to our valuable customers regarding the work that has been to, done in managing bulls and how to train bulls in giving semen on a long term and in a repeated way on a weekly basis. Today, in an optimized AI center in the world, bulls are collected two times per week and each time when they give semen, they give two ejaculates half hour interval between semen collection number one and semen collection number two. Then it is the work of the lab manager to decide if those two ejaculates are going to be treated as one and mix them, or due to the differences, not so big differences in concentration and motility assessment, to decide to treat them as two separate ejaculates which are going to produce doses. Once the semen has been collected, it will enter the laboratory. And in the laboratory, the first step will be assessment of semen quality. In the older times, the semen assessment of, has been done with the microscope and the photometer. Today, in the 21st century, we are using more advanced tools in order to elaborate more developed uh, system of evaluation of quality. The main features to evaluate quality are motility, progressive motility, concentration, and morphological defects. As low morphological defects as possible, semen quality will be better. As good semen motility and progressive motility is, semen will be better. When we speak in our world about a better semen, it means that the probability that with that semen, with that semen straw, the insemination which will be done will be optimized, means that it will give uh, more chances for a calf, a healthy calf, in order to come after the period of pregnancy of the cow. So the way that today we cannot predict precisely the quality of each semen dose, but by using those optimized tools during the entire process of semen production, semen assessment and semen freezing, we can improve significantly the outscore and the reproductive parameters of the percentage of calving. And by improving those advanced features of percentage of calving, in that way, we can improve the quality of the semen. And in that way, we can have more repeatable, accurate and reliable results. 
the most common features which are today used on uh, semen quality assessment will be a CASA system, computer assisted sperm analyzer. And it is very interesting to note that IV India has developed an independent after sales service and expertise in working with CASA systems coming from I France for a long period of time. You have several knowledgeable people who are using and helping customers in India to uh, install, work, and reproduce positive results by working with CASA system. So, uh, and there is a very frequent collaboration between, in the same time, IMV France, IMV India, and uh, the company who is the supplier and producing other IMV France guidance CASA systems that can be done and used. Today, a basic evolution of a CASA system goes into several directions. Uh, more modern and advanced feature of CASA system do not focus anymore on only doing motility, progressive motility, concentration, and five key essential morphological defects, but also you find a CASA system in which you can do assessment of the acrosome detection, mitochondria assessment of semen, and even in some features for some advanced research, you can do DNA research of sperm. But we also use another tool which is helping us to work in such progressive way. And that advanced tool that we're using is called a benchtop flow cytometer. The model that is used by IMV India, IMV France worldwide is called an easy site. Two, two options of the easy site. The one which is a basic feature, which we call easy site HT. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. Dr. Misa. Dr. Misa, sorry, the slide is not moving. I know. I have always the same slide. Don't worry. Okay. It is normal. Okay. Because a lot many questions are raising. That's right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I understand. But this is a general slide in which I regrouping all the answers. And then based on that, people will be able to ask me questions. But okay. thank you for thank, asking. Thank you, Dr. Misa. It, it is clear to all participants. Thank you very much. Okay. So what I'm showing you now uh, is that uh, I, I hope you are seeing my cursor, how it is moving. And then with my cursor, I'm showing you a CASA system, the consumable for the CASA system, which is called a pre-calibrated slide produced by a Dutch French company called LIA. And on the other hand, you have the easy site with an easy soft developed special feature for semen assessment by benchtop uh, sperm analyzer. Okay, the next step of production, one we have assessed the production and one we have assessed the production feature and analyzed and the chief of the lab has accepted the semen to enter the laboratory. It has been analyzed by a CASA system then we are going to dilute sperm or we are going to protect it because we have taken out from the animal. Now it is our duty to protect it and to prepare it for freezing. I hope you're still seeing my cursor. And here I'm showing you with my cursor on the slide, the generation number five of media extender produced by IMV called optic cell in which you have no animal protein inside. It is the generation number five of media produced by IMV technologies in which you have no egg yolk. Today, a vast majority in the world are producing semen with egg yolk or milk-based media. We do have also those kind of media in our uh, pro uh, proposition, but today, uh, the best results that we have obtained in the field by different users worldwide is coming from this media that you can see on the slide, which is called optic cell. It is a synthetic based media and it has shown some outstanding features in conservation and freezing of semen in 
both indicus, both taurus, and buffaloes, European buffalo, Indian buffalo as well, and shown some very positive outcome in endangered species as well. Once the straw, and this is the key feature that we have here that we used, uh, which is the straw. This is the new generation straw. You, you have to understand that IMV has been producing straws in his valued mission for already more than 50 years. The very first straw that has been developed is what we call today the medium conventional straw. The medium conventional straw today is a medium and is a straw that has a volume of 0.5 ml straw. The world has been shifted in the meantime, and in the 80s, IMV has developed also a mini straw, which is a straw with a lower volume. Instead of being a 0.5 ml straw, it has been a 0.25 ml straw. The evolution of the straw has been continued, and a few years back, two or three years back, IMV has developed a newest generation of the straw. In India, there has been a use already of a third generation of straw produced and developed by IMV uh, friends, which is called the TBS straw, the top bull straw. And this straw has shown already some outstanding features. But as we cannot stop progress, and as IMV is involving and developing a lot in its R&D department, that's why it has been developed also a new generation straw, which is called the alpha straw. The alpha straw exists in two volumes as well, which is in 0.5 and 0.25 ml straw. The alpha straw has also some outstanding features. It has a fluorochrome detection of uh, closing of the straw. It means that once you fill the straw, with the machine or even manually, you can also test if the straw has been moistured positively. What does it mean moistured? It means that the straw that has been developed has a, a tube in which there is a plug and the plug is made out of three parts. Two parts are made of cotton and one part is made of uh, powder. The correct feeling of the straw is that when you are introducing semen inside the straw, the first part of the cotton has to be moistured, humidified, and then the first third of the powder part has to be moistured and humidified as well. In such a way, the, close, the straw will be tightly closed and therefore will not be able to get anything inside, inside the straw and everything will be developed based on that. Therefore, nothing will be able to come in and nothing will be able to come out. Nevertheless, to have an additional security on the straw, we have developed an interesting feature called the Izevo Semen Packaging Machine, which you can see also in number four of our slide, in point number four of our slide. And this feature can be very interesting in order to develop and in order to close the straw from both sides. It has been developed today, that machine, to either close the alpha straw, either to close the Sensitep alpha straw, which is a special technique and a special uh, in the wall, uh, smart plastic application that allows the user to define if the straw has been properly thawed and the Zevo also can close as well. The uh, application of the Zevo machine can also close the straw of conventional and TBS as well. So it is a multi-straw packaging system. Once we have filled uh, completely the straw uh, with the machine, then we are going to repair break the semen because originally the semen that has been taken from the animal it has been on 37 36 degrees celsius then 
it will reach during the assessment, it means semen analysis, semen dilution, semen packaging, it will reach room temperature. Usually in European labs, in bovine labs, room temperature is considered to be in somewhere between 18 and 22 degrees. There is an AC system working in the labs, therefore independently on the weather outside the lab, we can stabilize and have always the same type of temperature inside the lab on a stable way. And therefore, we can always guarantee the same temperature of production. Then, uh, I know it is much more difficult. While I have been privileged to visit several labs in India, I know that sometimes fighting with the EC in order to have a stable temperature and uh, we know all well how very much different the weather can be in different period of the year in India and how can sometimes problematic weather can be either very hot, very hot and dry, or very cold and humid. Therefore, it can be a very big complex situation in order to organize a stable production because already it's not easy for the animals to adapt to the weather and give always repeatable good quality semen. A lot of ejaculates have to be rejected due to weather conditions because the weather is not optimized and very well organized to produce. And therefore, it can be very complicated to organize a good and stable semen production in India. Once the semen has been quality checked, then it has been um, diluted, mixed with media. Then it has been packed. It will go for the usual protocol is four to six hours in order to be able to go and assess semen and in order to bring semen at the starting point of a freezing, which is plus four degrees. And then with a range of different type of biofreezers, called the digit cool range of freezers, where you have the digit cool, the mini digit cool, the micro digit cool, and the nano digit cool, but which is mainly used in human application in fertility labs, you are going to freeze the semen in order to have a good and valid uh, quality semen assessment. In bull and in boss, Taurus, Bos Indicus, and Bos Bodis in general, the semen freezing curve will last for seven minutes. The entire process of a full cycle of freezing semen plus preparing the freezing for the next session of freezing will take approximately 30 minutes. How many straws can you uh, freeze in one cycle in, for example, in a uh, mini straws or mini alpha straws in a mini in a digit cool machine. You can see uh, by one cycle of seven minutes, you can freeze between 5,000 and 5,600 mini straws, which is a very large and vast uh, number of straws, depending on the number of bulls that you are going to collect on that day. Once the semen will be frozen. It will be transferred by the user of the freezing machine to a quarantine temporary sperm bank or sperm tank, 40 or 60 liquid nitrogen liter volume. And then it will be kept there for at least 24 to 48 hours before the semen in straws will be quality analyzed and before it will be either discarded if it didn't pass the threshold of quality upon the lab, or it will be uh, kept in the sperm bank before it will be sent into the field in order for qualified technicians to inseminate the cows. Here stops the production and the work in the lab of the production. And therefore, semen will be sent outside into the field in order to have a quality transport of semen to the subcenters or by artificial insemination technician 
who will then visit their customers and inseminate buffaloes and cows in the field for insemination. Of course, have no doubt, IMV India and IMV France can propose also very interesting tools in order to inseminate cows. We have a wide range of guns or semen applicators, wide range of uh, sheets that are going to be used with semen applicators. And the latest one is called an alpha sheet. And there is a new one, which is very soon coming out to the market called the top bull sheet. And the top bull sheet is very useful tool developed for hyphers, for hyphers or primiparous cows who are going to be inseminated for the first time, who have a very more rigid and intact cervix and therefore will need a more rigid gun and a more rigid uh, sheet able to be used in order to develop and to use it. Then it will be also used in a very useful, you're going to need gloves. And of course, in the family of IMV technologies, there is also a company called Polysem who is building and creating and producing gloves for artificial insemination. All those gloves are used and you have also in a very wide range of different gloves which can be used. You have also uh, a very unique glove which is called an organic glove. All gloves in the world are produced on plastic, PVC, but this glove is a unique glove and IMV has already produced a generation number two of this glove. And this glove is very unique because it is a made not of plastic, but of starch of potatoes and corn. And the biodegradability of that glove, it is three times faster than of the conventional glove. When you inseminate a cow, you usually, in farms, you usually throw away the glove into the hay. And there it will start its decomposition process. The decomposition process will take more than six months for a conventional glove. For this generation of gloves and for the new generation of organic glove, the decomposition period of time is three times less. By 90 days post insemination, the glove will be at least 80 to 85% decomposed completely. So this is a very interesting feature to think about in the new generation of um, these kind of things that can be developed and to improve our situation on the planet. And that's why there is an engagement of IMB to help and to develop biodegradable products. The last feature which I would like to explain uh, before I give you the floor for questions and open discussion would be that we have developed in the past time, but this is will be a subject of a next uh, episode of this kind of webinar uh, organized by the university commonly with IMV India uh, is the Alpha Vision. But more details about the Alpha Vision, a tool for insemination and diagnosis of the cervix will be told to you to what I believe is going to be the next session organized tomorrow afternoon. And last but not least of our slide is the feature in which I would like to explain that uh, IMD uh, has been developed a special feature and has a sister company which is developing scanners. Scanners for doing ultrasonography, diagnosis of pregnancy, among other animals, also cows. Mr. Giri, uh, with this, I would like to end my introduction and I give the floor to you and I'm ready to answer all the questions regarding semen production and to go into more details for whatever need that you uh, would like to ask regarding quality smooth semen assessment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Misa. A uh, few of our participants want to see some slides, uh, like as you have briefed very well, but it is in single slide. You are, they are interested okay. in the different slides. 
like cry preservation and all yes so, yeah please uh, after that we'll have a question answer session okay so i'm sharing another slide right now so uh, uh, so this is cryo preservation presentation i wanted to share with you so I hope that you see it. Can you confirm that you see the slide? We of, can see, uh, but make it a full screen, Dr. Misa. Okay, now it's perfect. Is it the fact now? Yeah, perfect, thank you, Dr. Very Misa. good. So uh, this is a short presentation I would like to show you about the importance of crowd preservation and what are the key features that people have to take care when they are cryopreserving semen. So just a brief uh, summary that we have two types of freezing biological material. The first type of freezing is called vitrification. And this is a feature that is mainly used sometimes for semen. Do you hear me well? Yes, yes, you're okay. perfectly audible. audible Sorry. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Giri. So vitrification, which is a very quick feature of artificial, of uh, freezing and freezing biological material. But today it is mainly used for embryos and for different stages of embryo development. We are talking here mainly about slow freezing of genetic material. And this is the one which is our, the most interesting for us part. It is freezing in straws, alpha straws or different type of straws of semen. And the rate, the optimum rate of freezing of semen would be to freeze it between 10 and 60 degrees minute per minute of decreasing temperature in order to freeze it as quickly as possible. As a reminder, the starting point of freezing semen is starting at four degrees Celsius. The ending point of freezing with the biofreezer of semen is finishing at minus 140 degrees Celsius. When you know that the liquid nitrogen temperature is minus 196 degrees Celsius, then you understand the necessity of post-freezing adaptation of semen after the end of freezing in a liquid nitrogen tank from minus 140 to minus 160 of semen and the possibility and the need to freeze it for at least 12 hours before you're going to analyze it for quality control. Please take a note, a take a home message that we never advise our customers to analyze semen just after freezing, because at that moment, the semen is not yet ready to be analyzed and to be properly um, uh, giving a reliable, accurate result of the freezing. Okay, so this is a very short slide where is important features to take care when you are going to store semen post freezing. And this is very important. The most important factor to have for a good freezing rate is what we call to have a good survival rate. Because the most important criteria is that post freezing we are sure that the semen that is going to be sent and used for artificial insemination, after it's going to be thawed, is going to have enough sperm active, motile, progressive motile sperm inside to obtain a calf. This is where the question of when you are freezing conventional semen or when you are freezing sex, sex stored semen where the concentration in one straw is much is around 20 million sperm in conventional dose and when the concentration is somewhere in between two and four million in a sec sorted straw then the policy and the protocol for freezing those kind of straws is not the same just to remind our audience what does it mean a sec stored straw? Today has been developed different techniques. And when you are using a conventional straw with artificial insemination, you have 
50 to 50 percent chance to obtain either a male calf or either a female calf. A special technique has been developed within time uh, and it has created today a special technique in order to sort semen. It means to make the differentiation between a female sperm and a male sperm. You may ask me legitimately, how does a sperm can be male or female? Just as a reminder, a, male, a sperm is a bear of one chromosome. That chromosome can be either a chromosome X or a chromosome Y. If it is a chromosome X and when it will, it will mix, fertilize with the egg, who is always a bearer of a chromosome X, then it will be a female calf. When a Y chromosome sperm will mix with the egg X, this will produce a male calf. And therefore, that's why you have a technique which is sorting semen. Because the technique is very complicated and complex, you cannot produce the same level of straws that you can produce from one ejaculate uh, that you can produce also with the sex stored semen. That's why with the conventional ejaculate, you can produce between 400 and 500 0.25 ml straws of conventional semen and each of them to be rich around 20 million of sperm inside. The technique being very complex, when you are sorting semen, you can produce 50 to 60 straws out of one ejaculate, and those, ejac those straws will be between two and five million straws maximum selected. That's why it is not the same protocol to freeze a conventional straw, and it is not the same protocol to freeze a sex sorted straw. The very next factor, which is very important in order to have a very good freezeability of your straw is the medium you're going to use. A medium, just to remind you, or an extender, because medium is more in the technical vocabulary, something that you use when you are mixing with embryos. And the uh, medium and the extender is something that you are mixing with semen. It is a buffer mixed with different chemical compounds in order they're going to help you to produce and to freeze semen. The elements that are used in a chemical compound like an extender to freeze semen are called cryoprotectants. In the older times, it was egg yolk, or it could have been milk, or it could have been glycerin, glycerol, another chemical compound. Today, we are happy to announce that we have generation number five of free antibiotics and free, especially uh, animal protein, egg yolk based compounds. So to help us in order to cryoprotect the, everything that can help us to do very good protection of semen during the uh, freezing process. So this is the cryoprotectant. They will protect semen of not having the same quality of protection depending of everything which will do during freezing when you are creating crystals. So it means that you have two type of crap protectant, one which is going around the sperm, protecting it and not allowing water to penetrate, or you have a cryo protectant which will enter the sperm cells in order to create ice crystals which will protect sperm during freezing and storing in liquid nitrogen capacity. So that's why you are using different type of cryoprotectant, glycerol, ethylene glycol, sucrose, sugar, everything that can help you in order to well protect the semen. The freezing curve is something that is very important to uh, take care and not to neglect. So here you have an experiment that has been done by using different concentration of the basic cryoprotectant invented by Chris Polge in the 60s, 1961, from University of Cambridge by using cryoprotectant glycerol to protect semen during freezing. And that opened that research 
together with the help of Audrey Smith, giving the possibility of, the, of freezing biological material, semen, embryos, uh, oversight, stem cells, different kinds of genetic material in order to protect them during freezing process. That's why it is very important to choose a good crop protectant that will protect semen against aggression of the outside world and against very intensive pressure that will be organized. The optimum pressure that a crab protectant has to protect semen against will be around 300 milliosmol. That's why you have to add very good quality of queer protectant. The research and development of IND has been using some of the best feature of egg yolk, cholesterol fraction, it's a non-protein fraction, in order to protect semen and the phospholipid part of the membrane of egg used in order to protect the semen during the penetration of the freezing process in the crystallization process during freezing. And that's why we have added and extracted what we call the liposome and the liposome technology in order to be able to protect very well semen of the seminal plasma and semen itself during a freezing process, okay? So this is different experiments that have been done in collaboration with the Swiss University and the collaboration with an AI center based in Switzerland in which we wanted to show the influence of equilibration time in preparation of semen before freezing after three hours or after three hours and longer of equilibration time by testing different type of media and by testing different equilibration time for protecting. And we are happy to announce that OpticCell, our baby, has shown the best protection way and the best results in plasma membrane and acrosome integrity protection and plus motility protection and most advanced feature of motility during semen and during this feature. So at that moment, you can see and understand what are the advanced features of a good freezing protocol, okay? So, freezing protocol and the curve is very important because it protects semen during freezing. This is how it looks like a very good and stable freezing curve. So it has several states, liquid state, super cooling state where the seeding is happening at minus 10 degrees and the seeding as a reminding is the moment when the liquid fraction of the straw is going to become solid that's why there is a consumption of energy there is an increase of temperature and then when it reaches its peak goes down and continue the freezing until minus 140 degrees so i want you to invite you to see this unique feature of never being able to see it before on the right hand side the picture and this is a unique picture that you can see it is the creation of crystallization taking the picture with electronic microscope from inside the straw where we saw the progression and the creation of the crystallization inside the straw together the same feature with semen the first, the first video that you saw, and then with embryos are the all others photos that you see in the meantime. I'm going to show you once again, please observe very carefully, crystallization process of embryos in which the embryo will find himself completely blocked inside the crystal. So it means the liquid which is around him, which is becoming solid. And therefore, without damaging the embryo, protecting layer by making crystal and for a more advanced feature in which you're going to be able to develop completely the most valuable part of semen or embryo and preserving it while freezing. This is also the curve in which we want to specify what are the most 
critical steps in which you have to be careful when you are doing your freezing protocol, where are the most sensitive parts where the semen can be damaged. And those feature, it means that you have to have enough liquid nitrogen in your tank. The pressure coming from your tank has to be at the optimum recommended pressure in order to have a stable and continuous freezing during seven minutes, how long lasts the freezing curve for both semen in either 0.5 or either 0.25 ml straws, either in conventional TBS or alpha straws. And this is where you can have, see. So this is a side perspective done by Morris and colleagues in 1999 from a straw in a crystal state to see how exactly is the feature. So the small red square from the first photo has been increased on the second photo and has been triple increased in the third photo for you to see how that mean from an electronic microscope perspective looks like a crystal inside a semen or an embryo straw, okay? The speed and the kinematics of the speed of the freezing is also very important. How you're going to thaw the straw once the freezing has been done and once the freezing has been st stabilized is a very important feature. So this is again the summary of the very most important different types of freezing in which you have to be very careful and very attentive of the key features of where the exchange of water from inside and outside the cell is a very important parameter. Just a quick reminder of the programmable range of freezer that IMV India can propose. And this is the very important feature in which we make an analysis, not us, but independent institution, university, to evaluate the quality of our freezing tubes. And this is something which has been very well established in the market. And this is how the liquid nitrogen vapors are circulating inside a freezing machine. Thawing, very important feature. What is the most important thawing temperature? 37 degrees, for how long? 30 seconds, at least 30 seconds. Otherwise, your straw will not be well protected. It means it will not be well prepared for the insemination that's going to come when you start to prepare in the straw. So we made two protocols, thawing at 37 degrees and what we call rapid thawing at 90 degrees for only four seconds. Today in the field, the most common protocol for thawing straws is the one that you see on the left of this panel, 37 degrees for 30 seconds. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I stop sharing the screen, Mr. Geary, and I uh, wait for your indication what you want me to do now. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Misa, for your uh, complete presentation, and it is very wonderful. One thing I would like to request or convey to the participant, the Dr. Misa have shown the cryopreservation part of the whole entire semen processing. He has picked it very briefly and went some a bit deeply on one particular subject. But thing is that if we talk uh, technically, we have to talk very deep and then a dedicated professional, we can go for dedicated seminars some other time where the professionals who are totally uh, doing or related to the semen processing lab. So this is a, a like a, a common presentation where um, Dr. Misa tried to sum up for the all. So there are a few questions uh, here, I would like to pick uh, uh, if Dr. Manoj allow. Uh, shall I, doctor? Please, sir. Okay. Please, sir. Please, sir. Yeah. So, uh, few questions are there. One question is from Dr. S.K. Sanjay Kumar Ravi. Sanjay Kumar Ravi want to know, Dr. Misa, the concentration what we read from CASA, is it okay? Is it perfect? How long is it perfect? So there is no perfect result in biology because if we had a perfect result in biology, 
then we would all be mathematicians. We will not be all biologists. We are today assembled a public and we are talking about a question which is relating to biology. So there is no perfect result, but there are protocols and procedures then when you do quality control of uh, those that has been produced and that you want to use a CASA system in order to understand the accuracy of the result that has been obtained, we have some protocols that we like, to, we could share with you in which by doing so, we can uh, testify and verify that the result which has been obtained in concentration with the most adapted protocol is the most reliable, repeatable, and accurate one. So uh, when we discuss CASA assessment of quality control of a sperm dose in concentration, we, are, we have protocols and procedures today that help us in order to optimize the work of the CASA system and therefore optimize the result that we obtain in order to have the most accurate result possible. Does this answer your question or you want me to fine tune it? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Misa. Actually, we have a lot of questions to address here. And uh, what okay. we will do, we'll try to cover a few questions. So whichever we are not able to sum up in this session, we'll try to send each and individual questions, address them with their individual email ID. So in between, I would like to convey to the participant that Dr. Manoj has shared the link where you can give the survey. And there are a few questions so we want to know whether they will be getting any certificate of participation. Yes, definitely we will give them a certificate of participation. Those who are submitting us the, that, uh, that uh, form will give them the uh, certificates of participation. Also. Okay, one more question uh, Dr. Subhajit Datta has done. Uh, so, we have conveyed uh, thanks to you for this comprehensive technical comprehension session. And he want to know that uh, what dedicatedly in Indian unrepresented sector IMB can uh, support. In case of Indian animal husbandry sector, mainly in rural area, which is very rural area, what are the IMB technology can help in this regard? Um, uh, the question is for me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, in animal husbandry Indian conditions, uh, IMB India supports uh, customers and end users in India in uh, three basic directions. The first one is to optimize and to produce and to give tools to uh, produce semen doses, which would be the most adapted for Indian market. The second is to help and to give tools to Indian farmers or Indian end users in order to determine the moment of heat and the most optimum moment of insemination and to give tools for artificial insemination, which should significantly increase the probability of having a positive outcome, which means calf. And the third one is to organize training sessions, webinars in both semen assessment, semen production, and semen assimilation in order to guide and advise uh, IMV India customers in order to optimize the production and the use of the tools they have in their labs and uh, in order to solve any potential misunderstandings when you need to organize semen production or semen insemination. Does this help, Mr. Giri? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Misa. Uh, there is one more question. Is IMB thinking of instruments that can separate X and Y chromosomes bearing spermatozoan with high speed capacity? A question from Dr. Sanjoy Saha. Um, so this is uh, uh, one lakh or one crore quality question uh, that I will need to answer. Uh, at this stage, uh, I have no information uh, and I'm not able to communicate if there is such a program or plan in IMV research and development. Uh, 
Uh, it is though a very interesting question that can be asked and that can be answered. Uh, the, the market is today extremely competitive, extremely on the edge for producing this kind of equipment. Of course, uh, we are um, monitoring and evaluating the market on this sector. But today, I cannot precisely answer uh, this question if in the near future, there will be such a machine on IMV side which will be able to produce such a machine. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Misa. Thank you, Doctor. One more question uh, from Mohammed Yashin. Wants to know, please tell either the slow freezing is beneficial or rapid freezing is good. Which one has the good results? For semen or for embryos? Yes, semen. Semen freezing. For slow semen, freezing. I will always go to slow freezing procedure because our results are the most encouraging obtained with slow freezing. Uh, quick freezing or vitrification of semen has not given because of a large surface of semen that you have to freeze because we are talking about large quantity of biological cells has not sufficiently shown positive outcome and results so far in the field. Sorry. So um, there is one more question, very interesting question. How long can we store the sperms? It is an anonymous attendee, but how long can we store the sperm? So theoretically in liquid nitrogen, uh, there is no time frame for how long you can store semen. Uh, it can be as much as I have met in the field and I have analyzed by CASA system, uh, semen that has been more than 40 years frozen in some sperm banks in the world, in Eastern Europe in particular, in this case. Um, so what is the main feature to decide? So technically speaking, semen can be kept in liquid nitrogen for ages. Somebody will even tell you for life. But the genetic value of the semen that has been stored and that has been frozen is decreasing quickly. So it means that in 40 years, if you would thaw the straw of a Mura buffalo that was the best Mura buffalo at that time when it was frozen, it will not be in 40 years from now the best Mura buffalo that will be on Indian market at that moment. So that's why from a technical point of view, semen can be stored for a long period of time. From a genetic point of view, it is not recommended to keep a bull in storage longer than five years because every five years you have a new genetic feature and evolution in buffalo that comes to the market that uh, overshadows the previous one. Thank you. Okay, great. So uh, there are many questions. So, so I was just filtering which are the uh, broad uh, exposing questions. So, so, and if we go for uh, addressing each and every question, so it will be a very long. So as I have requested to all the participants, we will address each and every question, but individually in their emails. So uh, one more question, I will I'll take one more question, uh, please uh, bear with us. Uh, the question from like uh, Dr. Mahak Singh has done a, uh, sent a question to Dr. Misa. He want to know that uh, uh, when the CASA motility, we see the motility in CASA and same time, if there is any variation with the motility with the normal microscope, so we see there is a lot, many variation in the motility part. So how do you explain this phenomenon, Dr. Misa? The phenomenon, the phenomenon is very easy to explain. Um, a lot of CASA system has been installed worldwide in labs where we have been working with lab managers who had the experience of more than 20 or 30 years in working in basic microscopy. And the entire know-how of these gentlemen or ladies has been based on the fact that they have been using very commonly microscope uh, for evaluation of CASA system. So let me, to answer most precisely this question, explain you one little anecdote. The closest AI center to IMV headquarters in Normandy is Legal AI center. 
Uh, we have been known the, uh, uh, the uh, lab manager of that lab, working in the lab for the last 30 years. The most difficult task for our sales managers who are uh, handling French market was to present to him a CASA system and to introduce a CASA system inside his lab uh, be, to use it in order to start evaluating from a more uh, repeatable point of view semen assessment. The day when he has changed and started to wear glasses, this is the day when he decided to introduce the CASA system into his lab because he discovered that he doesn't have any more the site of his 20 years or 30 years of age when he was starting to work in this field. And therefore, he needed to introduce a more repeatable, accurate and um, tool in order to evaluate semen quality. So coming to your question, and when we made a small experiment uh, in which we introduced the CASA and we invited to our lab uh, we put three microscopes on the table and one CASA system. And the same sample was going from one machine to another. And we had five people invited into the lab to participate in the experiment. Two of them were more than 20 years experience lab managers. Three of them were students who were only part-time doing semen evaluation by microscope. And we discovered that when uh, the lab managers who were working for a long period of time in the lab had somewhere in the brain a stock of photos of all the uh, analysis of semen that have been done during their career. And then when they, are they were watching a new sample of analysis, they were not literally watching the new sample. They were retrieving subconsciously from their mind a photo of analysis and they were giving the same grade as it would look like as it was done in the past. And therefore, they were comparing some data. The students who had no database in their mind of photograph of evaluating semen, each time they were spending more than five minutes evaluating semen quality. When you have a semen under the microscope and a focus light on a warm stage analyzing, you cannot take five minutes to evaluate semen quality because the sample is decreasing rapidly in semen motility. And therefore, you have to be quick, efficient in order to evaluate semen quality. And this is a feature that the CASA gives you very quickly, very efficient, very repeatable results in order to have always the same result and repeatable result on the evaluation of semen quality. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Misa. Final one more. I will take one more question because there are a lot many questions. I'm taking one more question. Very interesting question from Dr. M. Srinivasa Reddy. Dr. Misa, he want to know from you uh, that you have shown that uh, you require cold handling unit in the cry cry preservation part. So it's a very vital you said, but he want to know if cold handling cabinet is important or can we use a normal refrigerator in the which is generally we can get in the cold drink shops. Like he want to show that can cold handling unit can be replaced with the normal refrigerators. So, um, just to to avoid confusion, freezer is something that goes and brings biological material from plus four degrees to minus one hundred and forty degrees Celsius. Refrigerator is a tool which brings semen from room temperature to plus four degrees when the freezing is starting. Uh, can we use a normal refrigerator, commercial available, to do the equilibration? The answer is yes. But you have to be sure that there is enough gas which will be able to refrigerate the semen from room temperature to plus four degrees temperature during three to five hours that the equilibration will last. Regarding freezing, can you use non-calibrated uh, biofreezer to freeze biological material? This is what we do and what we use uh, when we are freezing biological material in the fields, for example, we have a collaboration with endangered species. 
Bengal tiger, for example, in India. And sometimes when you have the possibility of freezing in the field, in the middle of the forest or in the jungle, some semen from a Bengal tiger, which has been collected and then brought to the laboratory, which is still in the field and you don't have a bio freezer to do it, then you can do it also in polystyrene boxes. But you are working with very sensitive biological material. So that's why you have to be sure that the quality of the freezing that you do from a polystyrene box will be as good quality because you will not have a lot of ejaculate received from the Bengal tiger. So you have to be sure that the quality of the freezing will be good and that it will be able to be used for posterity after storing for a very long time. It can be done, but you have to fine tune your protocol and your procedure how to do it. By email, I will be, uh, um, I will be able to give you some more explanation. Unfortunately, due to the time, we we'll cannot go very deep into that subject. But yes, it's possible, but under very specific controlled protocol. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Misa. There are, I, I still see many hands are raising. Participants are very much curious to know many things, but we'll try to address ourselves because of shortage of time. Now I will hand over the screen uh, of mic to Dr. Monos. Dr. Monos is all yours. Please go ahead. Thanks. Thanks for giving me so much time to participate in the question answer session. Thanks, Dr. Monos. Please. Thank you, sir. So we are thankful to Dr. Misha Savi for his excellent and uh, very exhaustive presentation with every details of prior preservation of semen, which will be very useful for our day-to-day -day life in our reproduction purpose. We are thankful to Dr. A. M. Patulkar, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor Mapsu Nakpur for giving us this opportunity to organize such kind of seminars from time to time. We are thankful to Dr. Somkur, sir. Dean Faculty of Veterinary Science and Director of Instructions, Papsu Nakpur. We are thankful to Dr. Henry Kurkure, sir, Director of Research. We are thankful to Dr. B. D. Ahir, sir, Director of Extension. We are thankful to Dr. S. B. Kavitkar, sir, Associate Dean Nakpur Veterinary College, Nakpur, for giving us this opportunity to organize such kind of seminar. We are thankful to all the participants which are, who have participated in our today's webinar. Thank you, sir. We are thankful to the team of IMV, who with this organization of this seminar, we are thankful to the team of IMV who are with us throughout the period of organization, implementation, and execution of the seminar. We are thankful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Dr. Munoz, one question for you. Few participants are still looking for the link of the questionnaire, like the feedback questions. So, can you help uh, them, guide them where they will get the feedback question, sir, or we are going to email them? I have pasted the link, sir. Okay. Okay. I think uh, dear all participants, you can get the link and you please give the feedback on that. And we will address your each and every individual's question separately also in the in your email. And yes, there are few queries who want certificates of the participation. And once we get the feedback and we'll send uh, resend you the uh, participation certificate and sir, sir one, one more thing. Uh, tomorrow's seminar will be at 2 30 a.m. PM. Yes, yes. Tomorrow's seminar is very much interesting and uh, we'll do it by 2.30 p.m. So tomorrow's seminar on alpha video, uh, video topic, uh, artificial insemination gun in uh, animal reproduction purpose. So that seminar will be at 2.30 p.m. So all the participants are requested to kindly join with us tomorrow by 2.30 p.m. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And uh, this is all from our side. And we thank you all the participants and uh, the panel, lovely panelists and uh, especially to Dr. Misa also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Now we are closing the session.